Stemple stayed on. We kept Stemple on. You had ties. In other words, you kept, you built up the tension by having ties. That's right, yeah. Words. And, but to, in order to make sure that there's a tie, if, if the point of the show is to have a tie to build up the rating, you have to be damn sure that they're both going to get the answer. Well, that's it. That's a, first of all, I had nothing to do with Stemple. It was with uh, uh, Enright. Right. So uh, I don't recall how many shows we had ties in. Van Doren knew the questions. He did know the questions. Oh, yeah, he knew the and, questions. And, but you, were for, you, you knew for sure that he knew those answers. Well, I gave him the questions, and he, and he I assume that he, would, that he would know uh, how to play it. Did, did, he, did he know that one night he was going to win that night? Uh, they, no, he didn't know. He didn't know? No. Did he require any coaching at all in the sound booth? Or? Well, the, the propaganda that came out said that he did. Uh, I am not a acting coach. I said, be natural, be yourself. It was a very tense situation. It is tense. You're in that hot booth. There are millions of people watching you. And he was well aware of who he was and what he was. And he was well aware of what was going on. And if he started as a lark and the way of making a couple of thousand bucks to take a holiday, uh, when uh, the, when he was told at the end of the evening, uh, end of the show, how effective he was, obviously he felt good about it. Yeah, well, don't forget, this changed his life. He had no idea when this started, as I didn't, no one did. Because that is the major point that I had, that I want to make, that when this sort of magic took place with Van Doren, uh, and it was sheer entertainment. Entertainment, it was magic. You know, magic is what we, the tricks that you have to create the magic. Uh, he was so effective uh, as a contestant that he himself was able to create a show that shot up, that became one of the top television shows, that brought in millions of viewers on Monday night, that with, with the 64 and its publicity and Van Doren and its publicity literally was the explosion that resulted in Mid-America buying television sets in the Smith 50s by the millions. Before Van Doren, the television sales were essentially urban with, in cities. Word of mouth spread with this guy, and by the time he left the show, they literally had sold a, a, an ungodly number of television sets in, in the United States. So he should be thanked by uh, the television networks and by the television set makers. Uh, the extraordinary effect that he had on people around the country was despite was despite the fact that the press resented the power of television as a competitor the reporter not the publisher the reporter saw that this was a damn good story and the press that he got culminating in the cover of time and then getting the slot on the Today Show uh, made him a celebrity getting thousands of letters from all over the country, proposals, marriage proposals. It was incredible. Now, 
you have to understand, and I will reiterate it. Here I am a producer of a show, thinking the show's going to be on for another uh, relatively few weeks. I meet this guy, at least he's going to, I think he's going to be okay. I was totally unprepared for this revolution that took place as a result of his appearance in the mid-1950s. Because it struck me and all of us of the extraordinary power that this medium had. When, when I first started television with Pinky Lee, it was, it was sort of a, yeah, it was new, but so what? And most people didn't know and had no interest in television. Uh, but the power of this medium in getting and creating a television hero was so, for me, so unexpected that I literally, not only being caught by surprise, I really didn't know how to take it and what to do and how to react. And it was taking basically the decisions regarding this show were taken from me as a producer and were now in the hands of NBC and our, uh, our, um, our sponsor and ad agency who then took over. When was a decision made to knock Van Doren off? And why was that decision made? Oh, because I think uh, he had been on long enough. What? Yeah, there, I, there came a point when you just felt that that it was uh, that he had been on long enough. Mm -hmm. And how did he handle that? How did he feel about that? Fine, no problem. He had enough. Oh sure. And he made enough money. Yeah, oh sure. Did he object at all to being taken off the no, air? No, no, no. After you were indicted or any time since that indictment. Have you ever spoken to Charles Van Doren? Um, I met him at the book fair in Frankfurt, Germany in 1974. He was then an editor, publisher of the Encyclopedia Britannica. He was with a group of people I said, hello, Charles, and uh, he said, hello, and he walked away. How did you feel? I felt very sad for him. I did get, uh, at the time, no, that's it, that was the only time. Did he ever say thank you for what you did at any point? after you protected him before the grand jury? I don't think he knew what I had done when Richard Goodwin, unbeknownst to me, had taken the secret notes and showed it to Van Doren. He did not know that I, what the deal was, that I had gone back to the grand jury because I didn't want either him and the other contestants and myself to go on trial. But he did know that you were indicted originally. Yeah, he knew that, yeah. for denying that anything had happened. Yeah, that's right. And at right. that point, he did not contact you at all. No, anyway, he didn't, no. And he no. never did. Yeah. 